Well, let's go live to Westminster now. We can speak to Benjamin Kentish, political correspondent at The Independent. Uh, good afternoon to you. In your opinion, was Margaret Hodge disconnected with reality? Well, I think the context to bear in mind is this is a Jewish MP who lost relatives in the Holocaust, whose aunt was gunned down, shot dead outside a concentration camp in a, camp in a ditch. So I think she said herself this was an emotional response. She wasn't necessarily comparing it like for like. She was saying the disciplinary investigation that was opened against her after that row with Jeremy Corbyn made her feel in a certain way that related to her father fleeing Nazi Germany and there's obviously family history. So I think those comments were strong. They were unusually strong for a party about its own MPs. I think it is important to bear in mind the context in which she said those in when we're considering the kind of relevance and, and I suppose the accuracy of those comments. This is clearly a subject that's, you know, gaining a lot of momentum, gaining a lot of debate, especially on social media, isn't it? It is, and you saw the second trend on Twitter last night was Margaret Hodge comparisons, which was people mocking, and mocking is the only word, really, that analogy that, that, analogy that she did draw between the way that she felt she'd been treated and the way that some of her ancestors, some of her relatives, she felt were sort of treated in Nazi Germany. She said the day she found out about that hearing, she, she wondered what it was like to be a Jew in Germany in the 30s. And I think, as I say, I think, you know, we cannot lose sight of, of the context of that, and we cannot lose sight of the context that it, it came hours after the General Secretary of Britain, the British Trade Union, had written an article in which he really went on the attack, I think, against British Jewish community leaders and Jewish community groups. And I think Margaret Hodge's comments were, as she said herself, an emotional response to that. And I think some of the mocking last night was was not the right response. Whether people agree with her is one thing, but to have a hashtag Margaret Hodge comparisons in which people were, were making fun of her talking about her family history, I thought was a bit beyond the pale, personally. The anti-Semitism row has been brewing for many months within the Labour Party. How damaging do you think it's been? I think it's been very damaging in the sense that the party has very, really struggled to talk about anything else over the course of this summer. They would have had policy announcements and, and interventions they wanted to make. They would have had the kind of well-known summer grid. And the only real story in town, apart from Boris Johnson's comments about the NICAB, has been Labour anti-Semitism. There was a poll out this week, specifically about the, the row over Jeremy Corbyn and the wreath laying in Tunisia, that showed that about one in five voters had changed their perception of the Labour leader. So the vast majority haven't. Will it affect the chances of him becoming Prime Minister? I don't think so significantly. But what it really does do is entrench those divisions within the Labour Party. We know the leadership and the Labour MPs are not on the same page as this. And I think that division in the last six weeks over the issue of anti-Semitism, over the IHRA definition, over the wreath laying incident and over Margaret Hodge has become worse than perhaps it's been in any, at any time since Jeremy Corbyn became leader of the Labour Party. And if you were advising Jeremy Corbyn, I mean, what would you advise him to do next? Because he's got himself into a bit of a tricky situation that he's finding it difficult to get out of, isn't he? He has. And the, the IHRA definition that's been at the heart of this row in the last few weeks has become this sort of totemic issue. But I'd actually... And, and there's now talk that the Labour leadership is sort of ready and willing to accept at least most of that. I do think that has almost come too late in a sense. I say, as I say, I think it's become a symbol of the issues that some of the people had, some of the Jewish community had with the Labour Party. I don't think just adopting it now, several months down the line, is going to solve things. I think there's nothing that Jeremy Corbyn and the leadership can do as a one-off that will fix this. I think it needs a sustained period of action, of uh, reaching out, of doing interviews with Jewish newspapers, of accepting that definition. I think a speech that there was some talk of would be helpful. But this is a real low point of the relationship between the Labour Party and the Jewish community, which obviously historically has been quite strong. And I don't think that's going to be solved overnight. What I think could happen going forward is a series of, as a continued dialogue, a continued sort of number of gestures that would show Jewish people in Britain that the Labour leadership does want to resolve this. But I also think what we've seen this week is, is a sense in some parts of Mr Corbyn's team that they think they've already done a lot. And I think they feel a lot of the criticism is unfair. We know they've made a complaint to the press regulator about the coverage of that wreath row. I think there is both sides now seem very, very entrenched and it is hard to see how moving forwards this is going to be reconciled, at least in the short term. OK, Benjamin Kentis, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you.